everybody, and welcome back to the inn. We are continuing our discussion of the, uh, of the, uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne Crowns that have been released. I almost said Journey to Angoro. <laughs> Journey to Angoro. I have not listened to the new rap yet. So. <laughs> anyway, let's get this thing started with Ice Walker, which is a two-cost, uh, one-three, uh, mage elemental, with the ability, your hero power power also freezes the target. I kind of like this. I kind of like this card. Part of me knows it probably will not see play because all of the hero power stuff in the Grand Tournament didn't see play, which saddens me to no extent. But I like this card. I like the idea of the mage hero powering doing more than just damaging the target. I like it also freezing the target. It, it, this is not a permanent effect. You have to keep the Ice Walker out of the field. But if you're freezing the targets and you're picking things off and you're being all controlly, Mage might be able to pull that off. And if nothing else, like people are going, it won't fit in Freeze Mage. Of course it won't fit in Freeze Mage. I don't think this is meant for Freeze Mage. I'm seeing this more like in an elemental, uh, an elemental freezy, ma an elemental freezy type mage, um, or an el like an elemental minion based mage. Um, that is going to be running Frostlands Jaina. Um, so, this is this I'm, this is for, for the first time I'm going, where I'm going Elemental Mage, baby. Because Ice Walker, I think, like, when I saw Frostlands, Frostlands Jaina's um, Hero power, power, I really wanted it to freeze anyway. And Ice Walker kind of does that, so... Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, just the fact that if you play this in an Elemental type, uh, Elemental Synergy Mage anyway, uh, you can use this to proc other effects... And, of course, later in the game, probably when you want to be playing this, like in conjunction with Frostlich Jaina, um, like Frostlich Jaina and the Water Elementals, whatever, to control the board, this also gives you health. So I like this card. Do I think it's going to see you play? No. But I do kind of have a soft spot for it, and I do want it to succeed, at least on some level. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anything, like, you've hit a lot of the good, just dink, 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 dinks that I was going to kind of touch on, but it's just like, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, I like you. Just to plink something and then just it's frozen. And if I can just keep it on the board to where I can make it to where my opponent who may be running a weapon and just go freeze. 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 Just, yay! Ah. Uh, are we good on Ice Walker? Oh, absolutely. Alright. Meat Wagon. Four cost, one four, neutral. Death Rattle. Summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. Alright. So, I've been thinking about this card. And I'm just going, okay, so what can we do with Meat Wagon? That would be useful or beneficial. Like, yeah, you could buff it up and just go crazy on, like, like hand buffs and stuff like that to make it useful. Give it a blessing of kings and then just potentially yank out an automatic Tyrion, but I'm going to highly doubt that because it's just something that's less attack than that minion. So, really, if you want to, it's Meat Wagon, and if you can make it to where your opponent destroys it, you can get out that Doomsayer and make them go, um, what do I do now? Just do I, do I kill the Doomsayer? Or do I go face? Doomsayer, face. Uh, crap. I don't know, hey, Bob, can you find a more, like, wacky, zany way for this meat wagon to work? Well, first of all, you forgot to mention that it's mech, for all those wanting mech synergy and standard. Uh... Sometimes I kill myself. Uh, anyway, um, no, I, I really can't see this being played in anything but like a buffed in style deck. Um, it's like, yeah, you could try to get Doomsayer out of your deck, but at that point, why are you running Meat Wagon? It kind of just feels like it defeats the purpose. You could probably slot in a better card. I'm really not thrilled about this card at all. I mean, people are going, well, you can get your eggs out. Whoop de doo. Whoop-dee-doo, my darling. I just... 
th there has to, it has to be better minions. I mean, yeah, if you're running a buffet in style deck, this could be really cool. But then again, maybe you... I don't know. I, I, I'm just not thrilled about this card at all. Anyway, next up we have Necrotic Geist. Uh, which is a 6-cost, 5-3 minion, with the effect, whenever one of your other minions dies, summon a 2-2 two -two ghoul. Number one, I think this is kind of, this might be kind of nuts in Arena. Number two, if, if it's in the right deck, I think this, this card will do well. But my main problem is, it's a, is, it's costs. Uh, 6 mana. Like I said, the right deck might be able to make, uh, make good use of this, especially since, um... It, they ha they need to get rid of this. They need to get rid of Necrotic Geist, because if they try to kill the ghouls, new ghouls will just keep on summoning. So there are definitely going to be decks that will be able to use this. But I'm just trying to, like, I think Eddie asked me, Bulba, you might be able to use this, and Necromancer. And I thought about it, and I'm just going, it's too expensive. Um, so I decided I'm going to pass on this one. <laughs> it's an interesting effect. I'm not going to be using it in any, in any of my decks. I definitely think there will be decks that will be using it. Because its effect is actually very, very good. It's easy to kill, but if it can stay alive, you're definitely going to be able to get your mana's worth out of this one. So, yeah, there'll be, there'll be some uses for this. I don't think we're going to see it everywhere, because I just think it costs way too much. But I do think that there will be decks that will be playing this. Now, see, I take a look at this, and I'm just like, hmm, as far as the standard side thing of the competition goes with Necrotic Geist, it's like... Could this work in a more token-esque sort of thing? Maybe. But it's just like, on the real, it makes it hard to be able to kind of take it and just go, okay, this is, this is kind of how it can work. In Wild, man, with Imp, Implosion being on board, and or at least like three or four minions being on board, and then like if they can survive at least a turn, and you go Necrotic Geist and blink and blink and blink and blink. Look at all these chuchus I have on the board now. I've traded up, but you also got the idea of also being able to buff up your own minions with this new. Or not with this new thing. You've got a card from the last set that gives plus one, plus one to all demons. So it's just like, eh, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's just like, realistically, don't see it seeing play. In Arena, it's got a nice, sizable attack, but as far as its defense goes, it's kind of poo. I mean, as far as its attack goes in Arena, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the best thing in the world, either. Yeah, I mean, hide this behind taunts, and there you go, you develop an army. But, also, I, I remember we, we, we kind of discussed this, because you're like, hey, Bob, we can use this as a necromancer, I just thought, got to yeah. thinking. Because I use Fleshing Ghouls, it's a, it's a death row deck, because I want my, you kind of want your death row minions to kind of die anyway. And it's like, oh, you can just get two twos. And I was thinking about it, I'm like, at first I'm excited, then I'm, I'm like, wait a minute. For half the mana, I have Fleshing Ghoul. It has the same amount of health, and it gets a larger attack, um, not only when your minions dies, but die, but also when your opponent's minions die. And so I just, I'm like going, in general, your opponent's going to be trying to kill off either of them as quickly as possible. So, in that case, I just felt the price line was a lot better for something like Flesh Eating Ghoul uh, than Necrotic Geist, and you can basically get more triggers off of it, and it becomes much more of a threat. And... I... I don't know, because... Both of them you kind of want to play when you have minions on your board, so you can trade in and get, get, the, get the buffs or whatever. But I mean, similarly, similarly, you don't, you can't really play them on empty board. So it's like I felt that they were kind of similar cards. Flesh and Ghoul just costs less, and it, it gets it gets procked by uh, more thing, more minions, or more, more things in general. So I just felt that in general, I that Flesh and Ghoul or even Backstreet Brawler are a lot better for the minions that are going to be dying a lot type of decks than Necrotic Geist. 
in the right deck, I think this could this could be a powerhouse. But again, it's finding that deck, and that th I think that three health might be a sticking point. Yeah. So I assume we're good with this one. Yes. Yeah. All right. The next one we got here is Cobalt Scalebane. Five cost, five five dragon. At the end of your turn, give a f give another random friendly minion plus three attack. Dragon mage meta incoming. Do 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 do. Dragon mage meta incoming. <laughs> if anything, also this gives dragon priest another disgusting five drop. Because it's just, oh, do I have another friendly minion on the board at the end of the turn? Here, friendly buddy, have a plus three to your attack. Don't die on me. But just, you know, here you go. And then, oh, I've still kept it on the board. And you get plus three attack. And you get plus three attack. And it's just, ew. Just ew. And then also the idea of potentially being able to just pull it from another spite historian, at least in other archetypes, that makes it nasty. When it comes to Dragon Priest in particular, you're still going to want to pull the secret agent coming through, no doubt. Oh. Oh, is my turn? Yes. Oh. Yeah, uh, this is, I don't know why people are, don't like this card. This is an extremely powerful card here. Um, I mean, it's going to give Dragon Archetypes a go, and he's like going, like, Dragon Mage, whatever. We'll see if, if other Dragon decks rise back in other classes. But Dragon Priest especially, I don't know why people don't like this in Dragon Priest. Dragon Priest, power scale wise, doesn't have a lot of the options that, that it used to, um, prior to this year's rotation. Um, and Cobalt Scalebane kind of gives it a really strong, strong, um, a, a really strong uh, combatant. I actually thought that Dragon Priest was going to go away around, around rotation, and it stuck around. Now that it actually has a, an extremely powerful dragon to, to actually join the ranks, it's here to stay, guys. And Cobalt Scalebane is going to be in Dragon Priest deck, decks. If it's not, you guys are nuts. It has it. Its uh, attack and defense are very strong. It's on. It's on par for a five, a five cost minion. It's just a. It's just a strong minion in general. It is guaranteed to get something on your board plus three attack. It can make even the weakest things kind of scary and able to trade up, which is nuts for priest. And it can't. It can't be killed by dragonfire potion. This is a strong card in dragon priest. It's going to be played in Dragon Priest. I think that they're going to play two of them in Dragon Priest. Yeah, because if anything, when it comes to Dragon Priest, Dragon Priest is that mid-range deck that's just filthy. Like, absolutely filthy and disgusting when you think about it. And it's just like, now they're just getting something else that just goes, here, be even more disgusting. Hell, if I really truly want to, I can just go into this on turn five, and then you can make it an argument to where Scaled Nightmare could come into play and be on turn six, gives the Scaled Nightmare plus three attack to where it's now a five eight, and then it doubles the attack to a ten eight. Yeah. Like, yes, those are the dreams, but it's just like, ah, God, that is terrifying to just sit down and think about. I mean, you're, you're thinking, you know... Dragon Priest has definitely has the room to put the to put this guy in there. Um, when they had to make changes uh, to basically survive the rotation, you know they lost a lot of some of their mid range pushers um, that they had, such as um, uh, such as Blackwing Corruptor. This can easily slot in that old Corruptor slot in, in Dragon Priest, no problem. There's there's no reason priest is not going to be running dragon priest is gonna, not going to be running two of these. This is uh, we're going to be see this card. It's going to be disgusting. I think this might be a meta defining card. Down. I'm row. putting it in my meta. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in my meta defining slot because 
Yeah. It's too good to not. Speaking of better defining cards... <laughs> yes! Let's talk yes. about the best name in the game, Nofaratu. <laughs> At two cost, two three, uh, Warlock minion, with the battle cry, remove the top card of your opponent's deck. I think this is going to be going into every single Warlock deck. I mean... It has a decent stat line, for its cost, it removes a card from your opponent's deck, and a lot of people are going, whoa, that doesn't matter, it's just, it's like, uh, no! Removing a card from your, from your opponent's deck is huge, guys! Yeah, you don't have any control what that card is, and I'm sure they're going to show you what the card is when it gets discarded. Or when, when it gets removed. But, I yes. mean, that could be huge! You know, at the very least, you're inconveniencing them. This is a huge card. You know, it might not be a lot, you're like, it's not a powerful effect. It's powerful enough, and it's reasonable enough, that it's, that's probably going to be run, it's probably going to be ran as a two of, in almost every single Warlock deck. It's, it's just a, it's just, it's a decent minion overall. And, in a deck that really doesn't have a lot of options in a two slot, Nomferatu kind of fits the bill. It's, it's a strong card. It's, it's going to be everywhere, and I think people are going to start having a problem with it. So, yeah, this is meta funny. Yeah, this, this, this bad boy, bad girl, excuse me. For one, I love the artwork. Like. Oh, absolutely. Can, Eddie, can we convince Marky to make this her new avatar? I don't know. But it's just for me. I, I just mean, maybe we can convince me to make this my new avatar. Maybe I don't know you. That that's up to you, buddy. But it's just more <laughs> or less. I'm looking at this and it's just to me. But anyway, <laughs> uh, my personal own uh, thoughts aside, uh, the actual card itself. Oh, it's it's just. I'm looking at wild also in this when I kind of go into this. I'm going to go Bran, and then I'm going to play Nomfratu. I'm going to make you discard two cards. Then I'll play Nomfratu again, make you discard another two cards. Just because that's four cards off the top of your deck. Nah, 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 nah. And if anything, if we're in f that fatigue battle, if I still have Nomfratu in my hand, I'm going to put you deeper into fatigue. Just... Gnome Feratu, yes, it's it's definitely gonna be meta defining because it's like you're getting rid of one of your opponent's resources. They have the, every card in the deck for a reason, and you're getting rid of one of their things that's in that deck. So yeah, she's gonna be around for a good while, and she's gonna be actually useful. Are we good on Gnome Feratu? Oh, absolutely. Alrighty, next up I'm we sorry. have. Valakir Soul Claimer. She's a three cost one four. Whenever this minion survives damage, summon a two two ghoul. Bob, are we on the rise to see Token Warrior? Everyone, get in here. That's because I mean that's just one of the things that's just coming to mind for me. Like, you, this thing has the stat line. Of Armor Smith. And it costs two. <laughs> With Velikir's Soul Clamor, it of course costs one more, and you're getting a 2 2 ghoul whenever it survives damage. So you're getting at least a little bit of something. Now, when it comes to Warrior, realistically, they're more or less that three slot is contested by. Stuff like Aculite to be able to draw their Ravaging Ghouls to be able to have the kickoffs for like Sleep at the Fishes or at least be able to try to nuke the board a little bit with like weaker minions and whatnot. So it's just like, does Valakir Soul Clamor have a home in Warrior? And I'm not sure. So this is where I go to my usual. Bob, can you convince me on this? It doesn't have it doesn't have a place in current warrior. However, we have seen a token based we have seen token based warrior decks before, and we've seen they could be disgustingly powerful. Um, I just thought, why don't you throw ne Necrotic Geist in the same deck as this? 
And a deck that's really interesting and not caring about if it's things about doing damage to its minions and if the minions live and di die, producing the, the tokens, but then putting uh, necrotic guys on the field and then having it trade in and getting those tokens could be something. Maybe they don't, maybe they don't go that route. Uh, maybe, but we have seen a token-based warrior deck before, and we've seen them be incredibly strong. And that you pair this with stuff like animated berserker. Berserker, this is incredibly powerful. And you have to remem remember that uh, token-based warrior decks, whenever they've been ran, and I am including Patron Warrior, because that was a token-based warrior deck. Let's be realistic, it was. Um, oh, yeah, no doubt. Warrior also runs Enrage minions in the exact same deck. So... Yeah, uh, token token warrior decks tend to be a lot more mid range because they want to flood the field, they want to hit you, uh, but they know they need to develop the state to do that. So they will they pretty much damage everything. They will, they have the control elements to basically to basically do that against your minions. Yeah, I think we have I think we might see um, a token based uh, enrage type warrior deck uh, return uh, for the first time since Black Rock Mountain. Um, so yeah, I I think. Valkyrie Soul Claimer has a place in this meta. It's just going to be a, a new type of warrior deck, and they're going to need to work out the kinks first, but I do think that it, it's viable, and I do think it's going to be strong. So next up, we have Stitched Tracker, which is a 3-cost 2-2 two, two, uh, Hunter minion. With the battle cry, discover a copy of a minion in your, in your deck, and I meant to actually look up something before we start this. Let me let me do that real quick. I, I was basically comparing this card real quick to King's Elec because I wanted to make sure I remembered stat lines and everything. Um, it's a really... I think this is, is a cool battle cry. There could be a place for it in Hunter, but... Because this kinda g can kind of give you a... kind of give you pseudo card draw. In Standard, I think that there is a place for Stitch, Stitch Tracker. I think that, you know, it could find a home in a more mid-range style hunter deck. Maybe not aggro, because I think uh, aggro hunter just wants to rush you down. Um, I was comparing it to King's Ella, because I wanted to see if it was about the same stat line or what what, uh, what not, to see if it was just better. It actually costs one more, has one less attack. So I, I think in wild, I think in wild, King's Ella will still be ran over Stitch Tracker. Um, because it's still... A bit of card draw, it's just, it gets out earlier, it's just stronger. Um, so I think in Wild, it's you're not really going to see, see Stitch Tracker, but in Standard, I think in the right kind of Hunter decks, it has, a, it, it will find a place. I look at this, and I'm just like, what exactly, what all exactly would I want to discover with him? Because for one, already to kind of like tick off in his like in the negatives area, he's not a beast, which makes me sad. Because it's just like I discover Houndmaster, cool. Put it on to him, make him a four four. Um, something like Savannah Highmain, like that's one of the main draws for Hunter. So it's like okay, an extra Highmain, sweet. There's also the potentiality for Bear Shark, if you'd want to discover it. But it's just like... <sighs> At the three slot, I think right now, Warrior's got a stronger card in Bear Shark than Stitch Tracker, to be perfectly frank and perfectly honest. That's why I said it would be like more mid-range who, who might actually be interested in the draw. But, yeah. you know, I don't see most Hunter decks using this. Yeah. Good on this one, yes? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Sunborn Valakir. Five cost, five four. Battle cry, give adjacent minions plus two health. It's neutral. And I'm just like, huh. Okay. I can give something on my board, or at least some things on my board, plus two health. 
you're going to play this in like a token style deck one or you're going to play it in inner fire priest to be able to actually make this useful beneficial but at the same time with inner fire slash silence priest which you want to call it at this point they want the card draw so at that point with the sunborn valakir it would be basically like a clog in the deck if you get it early game so it's just uh... once again i go to my good friend bulb do you have any idea or at least a place i could put this arena besides there (laughs) (laughs) uh priest is not gonna run it because cabal town priest is just so much better and it's not gonna be ran token decks i'm sorry token token decks tend to be faster uh, they tend to either be mid-range, if not uh, a faster mid-range, if not just playing out aggro. They don't really need Sunborn Valkyr. Sunborn Valkyr reminds me of a lot of classic uh, minions that we from this game. And they remind me of the type of minions that just don't see play. I... I don't think there's going to see play. I, I can't see it. I can't either. I mean, I, I just, hands down, it's just, it's way too vanilla. Like, classic, classic Hearthstone vanilla. And like I said, it's straight up reminds me of the type of villains, the type of minions that don't see, pe- see play at all. And I'm sure you can find a place for it, but that's the slot probably could be better used for something else. So, yeah, I, I just don't see it being played at all. So next up, we have Archbishop Benedictus, which is the uh, Priest Legendary. It's a 7 cost, 4 6 with a battle cry. Shuffle a copy of your opponent's deck into your deck. I kind of like this card. It's, it's, it's great. Eddie, Eddie knows that I kind of like the... They're, they're starting to call it... They're, they're calling it meme decks whenever we're hanging out in the memers, because I, I like to tend to play... The, the crazy, random-loving decks of getting uh, things that don't naturally appear in my deck and making them work. Uh, Randomonium, which, relies on, uh, which is a mage deck that relies on me getting random minions and random spells, uh, which can work surprisingly well. It can, it's either, I mean, either going to crash and burn or it's going to be amazing. Um, I run a deck called Web Hunter, which focuses on uh, random beast synergy, uh, Jeweled Macaw, Web Spinners, um, uh, Stampede, you know, that that sort of thing. Um, I think the last few times I've played that deck, I've just outright ran over the opponent. Um, and of course, one of my favorites, uh, Burgle Rogue. Now, I have never really given... I don't know what, know what, you, I don't know what you want to call it at this point. Thief Priest, maybe? I've never really given it a... As as fair of a shot, or as straight as straight up of a shot as I have given the other type of decks, but I've been thinking about it for a while, and Archbishop Benedictus is kind of kind of makes me go, "Yep, okay, we're doing this." Um, a lot of people are going, "Well, you don't want to shuffle, you know, what's in your a copy of, of what's left in your opponent's deck into your deck because they have synergies and they won't synergize with your synergies." Yeah, maybe, but then again. If you are running a priest deck that is all about stealing your opponent's crap, you are pre- your whole deck pretty much revolves around taking their synergies and their synergistic, synergistic cards and making them work for you. So taking your, what's left in your opponent's deck, shuffling it into your deck, and then playing with with still with with your thief your priest stilly uh, cards along with their synergistic cards, which you probably already have cards that now. Uh, in your in your hand that now synergize with those, yeah, you're going to make it work, and you're going to be annoying, and it's going to be beautiful. I love this card. I'm probably going to craft this card if I don't draw it, and I'm probably going to give this type of deck a real, real go. I'm I'm not sure. I part of me wants to kind of marry it with a Lyra style deck. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but part of me wants to give it a go because if I can get this to work. This is gonna be nutty, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have so much fun. Yeah, well, 
was one o'clock. Or maybe two, three o'clock. The morning that I saw this car. And I'm in a chat with people. And I'm just looking, and I see this, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's one of those things where it's just like, why is this a thing? Like, who thought this was a good idea and just... My brain snapped and broke as a TLDR. And it's just like, okay. So, Archbishop Benedictus, I... Let's say we're having a go-around against Jade Druid. Let's copy the Jade Druid stuff, and then we become Jade Priest. Or at least, you know, when it comes to the song that's going through in my head of, you know, and your things are my things, and, you know, my things are not going to be your things. The more I play this game, and I keep stealing your stuff, it's just... <sighs> Bob, I know you're going to have fun with this, and if anything, I'm going to have fun watching you play this. <laughs> Because as far as, like, as being on, like, a meta side thing, I don't know if this will actually be a meta card. But just going around memeing with it, the trolling and crap is going to be so stupid. If I can make this deck work, I mean, like, really work, this will be great. <laughs> I know. However, I'm going to shift gears into Embrace Darkness. We're staying in Priest, because this is a six-cost epic. Choose an enemy minion. At the start of your turn, take control of it. Any enemy minion? Enemy minion. Okay. Sound like you started talking about onions there for a moment. <laughs> That's all, folks! And that's really, like, when it comes to Embrace Darkness, you've got that in mind. It's that it's just like, okay, this is a six-cost delayed turn mind control. Why do I want this? Like, my opponent, uh, given the chance, will take whatever card I pick and just trade it away, or at least get rid of it. Unless I, like, freeze it down. And it's just like, I would rather have mind control just to have the immediate give me. Now, the flip side of this is that with something like Mediv, a tick off the weapon and getting a six-cost random minion, that's... That's very much valuable. So, like, it's one of those... It's bad if I'm going to actually try to run it. But good if I can get it off something random like Lyra. Unless Bob has another argument that I can throw in my way to actually make me, make me go, Okay, meta. Last year, the Warlocks renounced darkness. This year, priests embrace it. Mm. Could be useful. Depends on how you use it. Like a lot of times, that a lot of times, uh, you could do the same thing. Like when war, if when warlocks use corruption, which they stopped doing. But when if they did, you could do the same thing. But if you couldn't, your minion did. Um, it could be the same thing here. They could try to trade off, but maybe they can't, and you just get it. Or they try to destroy it, and they just they they, they want to destroy it, they just can't. I don't know, there could be some uses, but you're right, I think in general, as far as deck, as far as card stealing, um, options, Priest just has, has better spells in general, uh, but it's kind of cool, I like looking at it, um, if given it, but with, with Lyra, if we can get Lyra Benedictus to work, this could be cool, but, um, I'm not gonna write it off, because I think it might have its uses, I just, I'm, I, I think I'm with you. I'm not sure whether you actually put it, put this in your deck, or just hope you just get it. So next up, we have Phantom Freebooter, which is a four-cost, 
three three pirate with the bow cry gain stats equal to your weapons. Mm. Depending on the deck, actually, I kind of like this. I kind of like this. Um, because the stats are always going to be uh, better than um, Blood Cell Raider. And it's not just gaining attack, it's also going to be gaining health. Yeah, this... Uh, I mean, maybe maybe Pirate decks will continue to run Blood Cell Raider, but they might have more of a... Um, they might have more of a... They might want to run this more. Uh, just because it has... Uh, it just has a better a better stat line at least starting off with. Um, it is going to be str it's going to be stronger automatically attack wise, and it's going to gain health. So it's going to be it's going to be scary. And I'm just thinking about this in conjunction with with Pirate Rogue because I do play that in Wild occasionally when I want to go full aggro. Um, and I'm thinking I will want to play, be playing Fran Phantom Freebooter. So yeah, guys, we're going to be seeing this. I, it, It's going to happen. I think we, we will see this... Maybe as a replacement for... Maybe as a replacement for Blood Cell Raider, but knowing aggro decks, they'll probably keep that as well. But yeah, I, th I think this will definitely be uh, seen a lot in this upcoming meta. Alright, so Blood Cell Raider is a two cost. Like, you're definitely going to keep that because it's mm -hmm. early game pressure. There's no doubt in my mind where that is concerned. The other card that I could see this replacing would be Naga Corsair. Because Naga Corsair is in that four cost slot, and all it does is just go, here you go just have a plus one to your weapon. Also, excuse me, it was about to say Raider. I wanted to make sure I got that right. <laughs> um, another thing I also want to point out on this card is when you look at something like Blood Cell Raider, Blood Cell Raider says, Battlecry, gain attack equal to the attack of your weapon. With Phantom Freebooter, it says, Battlecry, gain stats equal to your weapons. That little apostrophe S there could be potentially hinting at, I would say, something that Fall Morals on of Garrosh. Whatever the Garrosh Death Knight is. Now, and it's talking about your weapon stats. It? It's talking about the stats owned by your weapon. Basically, let's say you have a fiery war axe. That's a three-two, right? Yeah. You would get th you would get three. You would get uh, if you hadn't, hadn't used your war axe and you play this on the field, you would get three attack, two health. Okay. Then why not just say gain stats equal to your weapon? Because they they did it they did it correctly. Gra grammatically, I am correct, correct dude. <laughs> this is not I, talking about multiple weapons. This is talking about your weapons stats. Eh, I I can see the point, and I'm just like, hmm. It would be interesting to see Garrosh, uh, whatever the Death Knight be, be able to be like, all right, dual wield weapons. If it was that, then there, the apostrophe would be on the other side of the S. Welcome to Bulba actually using his English major degree. <laughs> touché, sir. Touché. <laughs> Are we good on Phantom Freebooter? Yes, we are good on Phantom Freebooter. Alright, so the next card we have is Mindbreaker. Three cost, two five, neutral. Hero powers are disabled. Can I just say that I like this card? Like, in both Arena and... I could see it 
potentially getting some play in the standard side of things if you find the right control deck for it. Because having to just go, I'm going to play this on three. Go. Depending on what class I'm in and what class I'm playing, making it to where my opponent's hero power is locked down and locked out, they have to waste resource or board to be able to kill this thing. And then they're just like, ugh, no, why? Why does this thing have to be here and exist? Rah. But yeah, if anything, for me personally, I like my breaker. I'm not exactly sure where it'll find its home just yet, but like, I like it. Oh. Yeah, I, I personally think this is a powerful card. I, I kind of like it as a card as well. But, knowing how the mi thought process, is, the mindset works for deck building, whatever, I have the sneaky suspicion it won't be used. Like, I really liked Inspire as well. I thought all of that was cool. I thought that opened up a really cool degree of deck building, and we could see some, some really cool counter play and counterplay there, and it just never happened. There's been a lot of cards I thought were really cool and really powerful that just never took off because, you know, it requires a break outside the norm, and just people just couldn't or wouldn't get them to work. And I almost feel that the same fate awaits Mindbreaker. It has the potential to be very powerful, but I also don't think that the community, the community at large are going to embrace this card, and because of that, it's going to languish in obscurity. So, it's one of those things that's like, this is really good, I just don't th think it's going to see play because no one wants to play it. It has nothing to do with how powerful it is, it's just no one wants to play it. And I think that's what's going to happen to this card. I mean, do you think I'm wrong, Eddie? That's why I'm just like, I don't know where to find it at all, but... I agree. So next up, we have Crypt Lord, which is a 3-cost, 1-6 Druid minion with, with Taunt and the ability, after you summon a minion, gain plus 1 health. Well, this is going to be annoying. I can already see... The type of Druid deck I think that would be playing Spreading Plague and Hadronox is probably going to be playing Crypt Lord. They're just there to stall you. This this tells me... This says that Druid... That you know, they're, this wants to be like in a control druid type deck. I'm just going, but druid really doesn't do control that well. I think with the right tools, the type of deck that this belongs into could be really cool and really it could be really cool and awesome. I'm just not sure if druid has the tools. Uh, but in general, this could be a cool card. I think druid has better taunts, but it could be good. Uh, it could definitely stall out and keep aggro at bay, but if that's all your deck is doing, what's your end game plan? I, I haven't really seen an end game for a taunt or a control based druid yet. I haven't seen it, but you know, we'll see. Eddie I have been doing my best to avoid the Ungoro pitfall of g looking at a card and going, that's nah, trash, that's garbage. But I have to look at this and I just go, what am I going to use you in? As far as, you know, a, a deck goes. Yeah, sure, you're a 1-6. Okay. A 1-6 that's, that's definitely in the deck you're going to be playing in, going to get bigger. No questions asked. It's just always going to have one attack. I mean, I think if that attack got buffed as well, it would be better, but it's all, with it always being one attack, all it's, going, all it's doing is just stalling against aggro-based decks, and um, there has to be an end game there, and I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you took the words right out of my mouth at this point, and it's just like, the only thing I can think of would be, okay, Crypt Lord. And if I really want to, I can just go, uh, like, Mark of the Lotus. Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild. Make it really big and tanky to make it just like, ha-ha, I am big and tanky, and I now have attack. But just, uh, you've got to have an endgame for it, because, like, most classes right now can just go, that's adorable, bye. 
And just, I'm going to keep going and doing what I do. Are we done on Crypt Lord? Yeah. I'm, I wish there was more to say. Part of uh, me, I do. Part of me kind of feels for the guy. Uh, I know. However, let's move on to Thrall, Deathseer. He's your Shaman Death Knight. Five cost, battle cry. Transform your minions into random ones that cost two more. With five armor. His new hero power that he comes along with is pick a minion on your side of the board and a bit by a level. Evolve into a random minion of one higher, of course. Yep. Transmute spirit. Transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more. Thrall Death Seer is a meta defining Death Knight. I am calling it right now. We already have Token slash Evolve Shaman being a top tier deck. All this is going to do now is push it even further. If, like, I'm just going to go out here and just go bonkers. Let's take Thrall Death Seer and let's hold him till about turn 10. Double Gangster, Thrall Death Seer. Oh, hey, look! Those three five cost minions are now seven cost minions. Yes, I've replaced my hero power to run. I now tap and I just go make that bigger, or at least a different cost, and just go. This. this thing's insane! Like, I want it! And I'm the guy who has always gone on record and off record of saying F you to Shaman but it's just now I'm going well damn it I want to play Thrall Death Seer because it's just this thing is bonkers this just takes that evolved Shaman deck and just turns it up another notch and it's just ugh this is disgusting bulb go yeah, this is the, one of the first really super powerful, uh, like the ones you would go, yep, this is going to see play with the Death Knights immediately. Um, like Eddie said, Evolve Shaman already sees a lot of play. It's already strong. Uh, this is this is going definitely going to be an include in the deck. It's going to be a must-have. And I think if I get it, I would definitely give Evolve Shaman another go and try to see if I like it again this time. But, um, yeah, it's incredibly powerful. It's definitely going to see play. So, yeah, this is a meta-defining card. So, next up, we have Tomb Lurker, which is a 5-cost, five 5-3 five, minion with a battle cry, and a random death row minion that died this game to your hand. I like it. I, I like this card. Um, this is going to see play in death row decks. Ju just like I said, that Shallow Gravedigger is going to see play in death row decks, Tomb Lurker, Tomb Lurker will see play in Death Row decks for pretty much the same reason. Uh, this gives you access to Death Row de to back to, to Death Row minions. Uh, and standard, we're talking about Awaken the Maker's Priest and Wild Primage, or any Death Row deck, or any Death Row deck that also shows up in standard as well. Um, I'm definitely going to be looking into how this fits into Necromancer uh, because the Battle Cry I think is that good. Just getting a random Death Bat Row, Row minion back. And also, if your opponent played Death Rouse as well, that gives me more options. Um, so I like this. I really do. Um, again, the 5-3 stat line doesn't mean anything because the, the, use, the usefulness of this card is its battle cry. If it sticks on the field, you have a 5 attack minion. That's pretty strong in its own right. Plus, you're going to have Death Rouse to pretty much get your, whatever your, syner your, synergistic battle, your synergistic game plan is into motion. This is just a good card. I like it. I don't think it's going to be seen a lot, but it, but in certain decks, the certain decks that need it, they will use it. Oh, yeah. Like, you're building niche, and you're building around this. I mean, if anything, it also gives me the ideal of, like, hey, this could make Jade Rogue a little bit stronger. Because, oh, look, I get my 1-1s back. Or I get Aya back. Yay! 
But anything else, you're putting this in niche stuff. Next up, we have Righteous Protector. One cost, one one, Paladin minion that has Taunt and Divine Shield. So if anything, I do have to go on the record at this point and say, well, Bob, you were right as far as the Divine Shield stuff goes. There's more stuff coming down the pipeline that just makes me go, all right, it can be viable. Um, this is a stronger Argent Squire because of the taunt. Plus, if anything, realistically, if I want to, I can just go, hey, I'm going to play buff and just buff this little one cost in my hand. So it's just, I can dig it. Well, I'm just going to pass it over to you now. Yeah, it's a much better Argent Squire, and it's definitely going to be used in Divine Shield decks. And my Divine Shield decks deck, this is going to replace the Argent Squires in that deck. Uh, the Taunt, Taunt Divine Shield is such a good combination. And the fact that, you know, this just just ones up, and, and it's perfect, because it's not a neutral. And that's why I think, I think you can really get away with it, is because the class-specific minions should be better than uh, their co than the corresponding neutrals. So, yeah, it, it, it's good that it is better than, than Argent Squire, because that's good for Paladin, and Paladin is going to want to run Divine Shield, so Righteous Protector is just what Paladin needs. This is a wonderful one-drop. I really like this card. Um, is this going to be run everywhere? No. Argent Squire is really not ran everywhere anyway. But like in a Divine Shield type deck, the deck that kind of want to run this type of card, this will be run over Argent Squire, hands down, any day. So, I really like this card. I'm looking forward to doing more stuff with it. So, next up, we have Runeforge Haunter, which is a 4-cost 5-3 Rogue minion with, with the effect, during your turn... Your weapon doesn't lose durability. If Rogue has a non-hero power weapon that they're going to use a lot, Runeforge Haunter is going to be a good card to play. If they don't have a, a uh, hero power a weapon that they're going to use, Runeforge Haunter is kind of useless. That's pretty much how it's going to break down. Uh, we will need to see if, if Rogue actually stick and sticks and gravitates towards a specific weapon, car, uh, weapon card. And if they do, I think they'll run Runeforge Haunter. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it's going to happen. This doesn't see play. I'm just going to straight up say it. This does not see play because it's just like you get to figure out what weapon you're going to want to run. And right now, Rogue doesn't run weapons. So it's just like, just at this point, cut dry. This doesn't see play. Yeah, but I'm trying to remain hopeful. I know you are. However, this time, this is where I become the ball buster. <laughs> I think we all know it's probably not going to see play, but like I said, if that happens, it will. All right, we got time for one more? We have time for one more. All right, last one we got for right now is Corpse Razor. Five cost, three, three, neutral minion, battle cry. Give a friendly minion, death rattle, resummon this minion. A neutral ancestral spirit for five. I mean, count the ways, or at least the cards, that could, like, make bonkers benefits with this. I'm gonna start at the very top with the king of death rattle minions himself, Tyrion Fordring. Then we move on to something like, at this point, I would say Voodoo Hex, Voodoo Hexer, because it's just, that card is so good to see. Just keep coming back over and over and over. Um, if it doesn't die the turn that it's out there, um, Archmage Antinodias, that Cobalt Scale Bane that I was just talking about earlier, that thing having resummoned is disgusting. And it's just, there's there's a lot of, I would say, lower-end minions that if you just go, I'm going to give you Death Rattle Resummon. 
to where at this point you may want to start thinking about having to run silence. Ooh, and Aya. I have black balls, another one of those, like, hey, this is what you want to kind of stack on top of her. Because, hey, look, more jades. Bob! This is a situational card. It's going to be, it's probably going to be used in, in, in decks that really want that situational effect. Otherwise, you're asking a lot for a 5 cost 3-3. Three, three. It's not going to be slotted in everywhere. But it's going to be slotted in, into decks with a very specific purpose in mind. Uh, whether it's there are multiple uh, minions that they want that they that they want this effect to maybe be put on, or very specific minions. I am going to mess around with the idea of maybe this finding its way into uh, my token shaman, my uh, totem shaman deck. But I'm also again wary of that five cost three three stat line, and I'm trying to. I'll have to weigh my other options because ancestral spirit just might be better, and I might not need the extra death rattle effects. Even though it helps with the end game, that 3-3 is asking a lot if I can't get that off, if I, if I can't get the, the combo pieces to really get that, get that off. So I'm going to be evaluating this, and I'll eva evaluate this in general in, in the decks that might want to think about using them. But again, I want to say... A lot of times this, this might be asking a lot, so you definitely need to make sure that your deck wants him first. Otherwise, you might have better uses for something else. Yeah. Like, you can honestly skip it, but I mean, just like, just the thought of making Nazoth even strong. Oh, God. It can't, it can't make Nazoth stronger. Well, like, I was going on something like, with Tyrion, like Tyrion, oh. Bob. Yeah. Where you can get two Tyrions or whatnot. Or like pyros, like oh hey look that little pyros, bonk. Yeah. I got the six six in my hand. Choo choo, back on the board. Okay. Then the sauce and wee. So yeah, uh, there are a lot more f uh, cards for us to cover. We will be back uh, in a few days with the, with some more reactions, and there'll be more cards in the meantime. A lot more death knights. They're they're release they're showing releasing them all. At least all this week. At least that's what they've said. So. <laughs> They said they're releasing them all this week, but we've only gotten, like, two yeah. so far this week. I'm ready for Friday, if anything, because I figure Friday's when we're going to get the release date of the new set. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you next time. Bye!